Okay, we're, we're moving on to acids and bases. I want to be really clear, okay? You all heard it here first. The stuff we just finished with continues. You can't just erase your memory from the last, like, three weeks of your life. Hopefully, hopefully the moment you handed in your test, you didn't just be like, ah, oh, right, hard reboot on the brain, and then you just dropped all the information. Because now we're focus focusing on acid-base equilibria, okay? It's still equilibria. We're still talking about the Chatelier's principle. We're still trying to use ice tables. We're still trying to predict concentrations once equilibrium is established. It's just that now we're focusing on acid-base systems. That's the entire focus of right now. We're going to skip 16.1, and you're going to cover that on Friday, because most of 16.1 is just a review of pH calculations. So can I actually just really quickly ask you to break out your calculator <coughs> for me? Go ahead and break out your calculator. And I want you to do I want you to do two calculations for me, okay? The first calculation I want you to do, yeah, 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 borrow a calculator, borrow a calculator that you know how to use, right? The first, the first calculation I want you to do, I want you to go 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 4.1 times 10 to the negative 2 times 3.7 times That's what I want you to do, do that calculation. And then the next one I want you to do, I want you to take the negative log of 6.31 times 10 to the negative 5. You just write it down anywhere, it doesn't matter. We're just going to practice using our calculators right now, and then we're going to put them away for basically the rest of the day. This could maybe bug some people, but the answer to the first question is what your calculator should spit out to you is something along these lines. Did everybody get that? Okay, now some people might not have gotten that, and you might be embarrassed and you don't want to tell me, and that's totally fine. But understand that this being able to use your calculator in this fashion, it doesn't really matter how you use your calculator, as long as you're able to get this kind of an answer, then that's perfectly fine. Then let's take the negative log, 6.31 times 10 to the negative 5. Your, an your, your number should spit out, your calculator should spit out something like this. Hopefully that's okay. Yep. So uh, using your calculator is going to be a really important skill. We're going to test this again tomorrow so that we're ready for Friday because I've got no clue who our substitute teacher, our guest teacher is. got absolutely no idea. So I just want to make sure that all the hiccups of using the calculator is out of the way. So make sure you can do this. If you can't do one of these things, either one of these, if you can't do that, then you've got to stick around at lunch and you've got to go over. But for now, what we want to talk about, we want to talk about something very conceptual, okay? We've got a definition of an acid, and the definition of an acid so far that we know from Chem 20 
is what we call the modified Arrhenius definition of an acid. So when I put a drop of HCl, so if I had a beaker of water and I put a drop of HCl inside that beaker, what am I going to make? You're going to make an acid. Okay, but this is an acid. So you're going to make an acid. But what are you actually making? What entity are you making, Jaden? You're going to make H3O positive, right? So in here, the moment this hydrochloric acid touches the water, the hydrochloric acid and the water react together. HCl and water react together. Sorry, I should have aqueous, whatever, and we're going to make H3O plus and Cl minus. And this is 100%. That's why I'm using a quantitative arrow. So you should, you should kind of be comfortable with this right now. This should be okay for you. We've got, what kind of an acid is this? Remember, there's two types of acids. Strong and weak, right? So this is a strong acid. That means it reacts with water 100%. So it reacts with water to make hydronium and chloride. The definition of a modified Arrhenius acid, the modified Arrhenius definition is anything that when added to water produces what? Hydronium, hydronium right? H3O positive is hydronium. That's a hydronium ion. The really old school definition of an acid is anything that creates hydrogen ions, right? Can you see how this is basically the exact same thing as that? Except here, we're just ignoring the water. Does that make sense? This and this are the exact same thing. We're just ignoring that this thing is attached to water. That's all we're doing, okay? Now, this definition of an acid is crap. It's garbage. It doesn't work in actually a lot of the situations, okay? This works like a good chunk of the time, but not every time, okay? And you might not even kind of recognize that that's, uh, that that's um, a problem. Our current definition of acids makes hydronium in water, right? And bases makes hydroxide in water is pretty good, but it doesn't really go far enough. For example, let's look at sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate, what kind of, of compound is this? What, how would you classify this compound? Molecular, element, acid, base, ionic. What's going on here? Base. Base. It's a base? Yeah. Okay. Sodium hydrogen carbonate, for sure, it begins with what? Sodium, which is a metal. So would you agree this is an ionic compound? Okay. All, all ionic compounds split up in water at least a little bit. Okay? When I put sodium hydrogen carbonate in water, it splits up into sodium ions and hydrogen carbonate ions. So you really need to honestly think about this as like two separate entities in water. You've got sodium ions that are like floating around in water, okay? And then you've got the hydrogen carbonate ions that are also floating around in water and they're totally independent of each other. Are we okay with that? Yeah. So one of these can act as an acid and one of these can act as a base. Let's look at the hydrogen carbonate. When I put hydrogen carbonate in water, every single time I put it in water, it makes what? Hydroxide. hydroxide, which means that hydrogen carbonate, what kind of a substance is that? That's a base. Would you agree? This is a base because it makes hydroxide. Okay, so we're all in agreement. Hydrogen carbonate, the hydrogen carbonate ion, is a base because it makes hydroxide. But when I put hydrogen carbonate ions into an already basic solution, the hydrogen carbonates don't make hydroxide, they actually neutralize the hydroxide. 
Can you see this, how hydrogen carbonate reacts with hydroxide? Remember, hydroxide's a base, right? So what does that mean hydrogen carbonate is acting like right now? What kind of stuff reacts with bases? Are you trying to tell me that sometimes, sometimes hydrogen carbonate acts as a base, and sometimes hydrogen carbonate acts as an acid? Is that what you're seriously telling me? Yes, that's what you're seriously telling me. That's really weird. And that goes against our definition of an acid makes hydronium in water, a base makes hydroxide in water. You know what I mean? That goes against our definition. So we have to redefine things. This happens in science all the time. When we define one thing, we have a model for how things work one way, and then we see evidence that contradicts our previous definition, so we have to redefine things. So we will do that. We will redefine things today. Um, we're going to talk about something called proton transfer. So in both of the previous reactions, there was a transfer of a hydrogen ion. Now I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to draw the Bohr diagram of a, of a hydrogen atom. Okay. So, so let's take a look. What, how many protons does hydrogen have? It's got one, would you agree it's got one proton? All right, okay, perfect. So one proton, and a hydrogen, a hydrogen atom, if it's an atom, it's got to be neutral, right? So if it's got one proton, how many electrons does it have to have? It's got to have one electron. Now, if we turn this this neutral hydrogen atom, if we turned it into an ion, what are we doing? Are we adding electrons or are we taking away electrons? We're taking away electrons. What do we have left? One proton. We call hydrogen ions a proton because that's literally all they are. A hydrogen ion is a bare proton all by itself. There's no electrons surrounding it. There's no neutrons in there. It's one single proton floating around all by itself. So we will refer to a hydrogen ion as a proton. So as long as you understand that, as long as you're kind of okay with that, then, then, then we can move on. So in the one case, let's think about this. I'm going to go back, but you just have to look up at your, at your page. HCO3 minus. Look at, look at it at the beginning of the reaction, and then look at it again at the end of the reaction. From the beginning to the end, did it pick up a hydrogen ion, or did it get rid of a hydrogen ion? If I start here and I end here, would you agree it accepted the hydrogen ion? Okay, perfect. Now down here, HCO3 turns into CO3. So did HCO3, did it accept or did it donate a hydrogen ion? Donate. It donated a hydrogen ion. So here, remember, this is when it's acting as an acid, right? When it's acting as an, oh, sorry, no, oh, oh man, holy guacamole. This is when it's acting as a base. This base accepts a proton from water to make hydroxide, right? So bases accept protons. Here, HCO3- is neutralizing the hydroxide, right? Turning the hydroxide into water. So this HCO3, it's acting as an acid. And what do acids do? Do they accept or do, do they donate protons? They're, it's donating a proton to the hydroxide. And that, that fits, that should fit with our traditional definition of an acid, right? When you think of the most stereotypical acid in the entire world, most, I would argue most people think of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid here, it's acting like an acid. 
hydrochloric acid. Is it donating or is it accepting a proton from beginning to end? Accepting. I see HCl turns into Cl minus, right? So it's donating a proton to the water and the water turns into hydronium. That fits, that fits our definition. Acids donate protons. Oh, okay. This is interesting because now if we define acids as something that donates a proton and bases as something that accepts a proton, we no longer need water. We don't need to talk about things in water reacting with water to see acids and bases. Something, as long as something donates a proton, it's acting like an acid. As long as something accepts a proton, it's acting like a base. So here, I mean, we have water, sure, that's totally fine. <clears throat> but HCl, right? HCl is donating protons, so it, it's acting like an acid. And NH3, NH3 is accepting a proton from water, right? One of these protons, one of these hydrogen ions, gets transferred and we turn into <laughs> NH4+. So it's acting like a base. Okay, that's the definition of a Bronsted-Lowry acid base. Um, there, were, uh, there were two people, one, one person named Bronsted, one person named Lowry, and they kind of independently but also together made this definition of an acid base. So we call this the Bronsted-Lowry acid, the Bronsted-Lowry base. I will symbolize it as BL acid and BL base. So what we're going to do... You can actually physically see this. Now, I'm not going to, but you could physically see this. If you had a solution of ammonia, aqueous, and if you had a solution of hydrogen chloride, aqueous, both of these things, this chemical, NH3, it's in the water, but it's, it has the ability to be volatile. It can leave the water. NH3 can leave the water. It doesn't have to be stuck, dissolved in water. Same as hydrochloric acid. HCl actually is a gas. When, it, when you dissolve it in water, it gets dissolved in water, but HCl, when it's produced, is a gas. So both of these things have the ability to leave their solutions. Now, what do you think happens when NH3 and when HCl meet? in the air. Do you see what's happening here? It's a really super low resolution image, okay? But do you kind of see what's happening when the va two vapors touch? What are we making here? Kind of looks like smoke, right? And what it is, it's tiny, tiny, tiny little chunks of solid. You're actually making an ionic compound. Just you're making such small amounts that they're floating in the air, okay? It's a, a lot like dust. And so our, uh, let's write down kind of what's happening here. So we've got HCl as a gas is reacting with NH3 as a gas. And what do you think is going to happen? HCl. Is it going to act like an acid or a base, do you think? Acid. It's probably going to act like an acid, right? I mean, it's called hydrochloric acid. So if this thing acted like an acid, what would it do based on our new definition? It would donate a proton. So if, if this proton gets donated to ammonia, what are we going to be, what are we going to make? We're going to make ammonium NH4 plus. And what else are we going to make? CL. We're going to make Cl. But it, yeah, if a positive leaves, right? If a positive leaves, what are you left with? Negative. A negative. So we're going to have Cl minus. Otherwise known as NH4 Cl solid which is ammonium chloride. That's the dust. That's the stuff that we're making there. Thank you.
Okay, so uh, this is acting like an acid, right? Because this is donating, it's acting like a bronze Lowry acid. Is NH3 acting like a base in this situation? No. What do bases do? What, what do bronze de Lowry bases do? They accept protons, right? NH3 turned into NH4 plus. That accepted a proton, right? So we still we still have an acid base reaction here. Do you see water anywhere in that equation? Nah. We don't need water anymore. We can talk about things interacting without water. So what I want you to do is I want you to identify the Bronsted Lowry acids and bases in these two equations. We already really talked about them, but just really quickly, either identify this as an acid, that as an acid, or this as a base, that as a base. So all of the reactants here, identify them as either acids or bases, depending on if they're donating or accepting protons. Look at something from the beginning to the end. Is it donate? I don't know if you would agree with me, but this is acting like a base because it's accepting a proton. And this is acting like an acid, water, because when we go from H2O to OH minus, we lost a proton. We donated a proton. HCO3 here is an acid and OH here as a base. So no longer we're no longer defining a substance as an acid or a base. We're defining an entity. An entity is just something that appears in a chemical reaction. Now we're defining an entity as an acid or a base based on the situation. We can no longer say that HCO3 is a base all the time. We used to be able to say that, but not anymore. Okay? It's completely dependent on the specific reaction that's happening. Sometimes something can act as a base, sometimes something can act as an acid. So I would get you to do this, okay? Um, but I just want you to do, uh, I don't know, just do A and B. So classify each reactant, right? Everything at the beginning of the equation as a bronsted Lowry acid or a base. Just do A and B. That's it. Should be pretty quick, and I'm going to do it. Okay, so in the, in the first reaction, is HF acting as an acid or a base? Acid. Acting as an acid, because when you see it at the beginning, it's HF. When you see it at the end, it's F minus, so it lost, an, uh, lost a proton. Good. So that means the other thing, by default, the other thing has to be a, a base, just by default, right? Because if something loses, something has to gain. That's always the way it is. So that's a base. Sure, no problem. And then CO3 2 minus, well, I'll give you another way of thinking about it. Can something act as an acid if it has no protons to give? 
kind of, kind of not really. So CO3 two minus is turning into HCO3 minus, so it's acting as a base, and then CH3COOH is acting like an acid. Sure, no problem, awesome, perfect. That's, we're just, we're, that's whatever, that's fine. Hey, we're gonna move on. Let's talk about amphiprotic substances. And I would like you, pretty please, to take out your data booklet if you have not already done so. And you're going to turn to the table of acids and bases on page 89. Turn the table of acids and bases. Okay, so you're going to have that out, right? You're going to have your notes out, you're going to have that thing out. So, as, as you can all plainly see with your own two eyes, HCO3 is hard to define as an acid or a base. We have to rely on the situation, on the context, right? Traditionally, uh, it's been a base, but you know sometimes it can act as an acid. In some situations, it will act as a base, in others acid. We call such substances, substances amphiprotic. Now, this is a weird word. Amphi. When have you ever heard of amphi? Uh, something. Amphibious? Ambidex. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, okay. Okay. Am does any has anybody ever heard of a, an amphibious ve vehicle before? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody describe for me what what the hell is an amphibious vehicle? Isaac? Yeah, it can go on land and water. Right? And that that's kind of a traditional definition of, a, uh, of an amphibian, right? An amphibian should be, should be comfortable in aquatic environments and on land, okay? But they have to kind of be near both at the same time. Now, amphiprotic, what does protic mean to you? What is that kind of hinting? What's the, I know we're just looking at protic right now. What's the first three quarters of the word protic? Proton, right? So it can kind of go either way with protons is what we're saying. It can both accept and give away protons. That's what the word amphiprotic means. So it can, it can accept a proton or it could donate a proton depending on the conditions it's in. So HCO3 can react with water and make hydroxide. Look at the KC for this reaction, right? This is an equilibrium, it can go both ways. Is this products favored or is this reactants favored? This is like big time reactants favored, right? Times 10 to the negative eight. So that's 0 0.00000022 is what we're saying, okay? That's big time uh, a reactants favored. So sometimes it can act as a base, sometimes it can act as an acid, okay? Do you see how hydrogen carbonate could also donate a proton to water and make hydronium? Is this product's favorite or reactant's favorite? Yeah. Reactant's favorite. Okay, so this is, this is like a big leap for some people. Which one of these reactions is more likely to occur in water? The top one or the bottom one? What I mean by more likely to occur is which one is more successful at actually turning into products? The top one or the bottom one? Definitely top, right? This one is way more products. Fit. This one is about... Um, it's about a thousand times more favored than that. So if you put a hydrogen carbonate ion into water, there's a thousand times greater chance it'll make hydroxide than it'll make hydronium. Okay, so it's, yeah, this is going to be way more products favored. But, but can it do both? Is it possible to do both? Yes, it is. And it's not the only substance that can act as an acid and a base, okay? 
When you look at your periodic table, like your table of acids and bases, let's look for a substance that can act as both an acid or a base. What I mean by that, look for an entity that exists as both in the acid column and in the base column, but they don't have to be at the same level. They could be at different sections, okay? Look for any, any entity at all, and when you find one, let me know. Dominique? Water. Can water act as a base? Yeah, hell yeah, it can. Totally it can, absolutely, okay? Can water act as an acid? When I look all the way down here, absolutely it can, okay? And that's a good point. We really only care about things, if they're amphiprotic, we really only care about them in between the shaded lines. We don't really care right now, when we're talking about amphiprotic stuff, we don't care about anything that's up here, okay? So water is both an acid and a base, depending on the context. It's amphiprotic. It could accept a proton and turn into hydronium, or it could give away a proton and turn into hydroxide. What else? Any other substances on here that are both an acid or a base? There's only like 15 of them, so don't look too hard. Jaden. A hydrogen oxalate ion. Let's look for the hydrogen oxalate ion. The hydrogen oxalate ion is here. Can this thing act as a base, or sorry, as an acid, and donate a proton? Yes, it can. If this thing donates a proton, it turns into oxalate, the oxalate ion. Let's find HOOCCOO negative in the other column, right here. It can act as a base and accept a proton. That's all you need to do to figure out if something is amphiprotic. Does it exist in this column and this column in between the shaded lines? Boom, yes. Absolutely, it's amphiprotic. So, go ahead and answer this diploma question. Okie dokie. It's okay if you didn't find all of them. This isn't a race, okay? I'm much more concerned that you, as you went through, did you do the appropriate things. Now, water. Is water amphiprotic? It can, it can both be an acid or a base, right? Because it exists in both columns between the shaded lines. So, yes. Now, there's a, I love, I loved what I was seeing as I was going, walking around some people is that they were doing exactly what I'm about to do. They were putting check marks or X's beside the compounds that either fit or didn't fit into this category of amphiprotic. Other things that you could do, you could circle them or cross them out. Anything to help you organize your thoughts, that's fantastic. The last thing I want you to do is just stare at it, keep it in the back of your mind and move on because you're, if you're writing a diploma or writing a unit exam, there's too much stuff going on in your head. It's trying to organize your thoughts. Okay, hydroxide. Can it act as an acid 
No. No. Can it act as a base? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, it's a base, but it's not an acid, so it doesn't fit. Doesn't fit our, our definition of amphiprotic, right? OCl minus. No. no. Can be an acid, right? H C six H six O six minus. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hydrogen oxalate. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. What about oxalic acid? No. No. One, four, five. One, four, and five. C. Wish. If you saw that on a diploma exam, would you be happy? Yes. Is that an easy question? Yes. Question. No. H H O O C C O O H. D? Oh, never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to, okay. Now, because, because this is an equilibrium, okay, is, are these reactions only going in the forwards direction? No, they're not. They're not just going in the forwards direction. So, these reactions can also proceed in the reverse direction. If I just had a beaker, this is insane, but if I just had a beaker of acid, sorry, of acetate and hydronium ions, could they react and turn into acetic acid and water? Yes, totally they could, right? If I started with this stuff, it could go that way. If I started with this stuff, it would go that way. If I started with mixtures of them, we don't know the KC of this reaction, so we can't predict what products we would react with. But let's describe both of the reactions occurring in the following reaction. What's, what's the really obvious reaction that's happening here? I would argue the really obvious reaction is the forwards one. Would you agree? It's CH3COOH plus H2O gives you CH3COO minus plus H3O. That's like the obvious reaction to me. What's the less obvious reaction? The reverse one. So I'm, I'm going to write it a different way, OK? I'm going to write it as if acetate and hydronium are reacting. So acetate and hydronium are reacting to produce acetic acid water. And I'm, for, I'm foregoing states of matter because I'm a chemist and I'm lazy by nature. So this is, this is the forwards reaction and this is the reverse reaction. Look at the forwards reaction. Could you identify an acid and a base in the forwards reaction? Yes, you could. What's the acid here? Is the acid the first thing or the water? It's the first thing, right? So here's our acid and here's our base. Let's look at the reverse reaction. Could you also identify an acid and a base? Yes. What's acting like the acid here? It's the H3O. This, this is acting as our acid, and this is acting as our base. So let's go up. Let's go up to the original reaction, and let's label our acids and our bases. CH3COOH, did that act as an acid or a base in this reaction? An acid, so I'm going to say A for acid at the top. Obviously, the other thing has to be the base. And then CH3COO, did it, did, was it acting as an acid or a base in the reverse direction? A base. Can you see how it's acting as a base? It's going from CH3COO minus to CH3COOH. From here to here, it's accepting a proton. That's a base, right? So base and acid. 
What I want to bring your attention to, this acid, what does it turn into? It turns into what we call its conjugate base. That's what we're, that's what we're gonna call its conjugate base, okay? Uh, now, the, in this sense of the word, the conjugate is whatever it turns into. If you start with an acid, right? This thing here, if you start with an acid, what does it turn into? Base. A base. Does that make sense? Because if I lose a proton, now I have a spot to accept again. Does that make sense? There's like an empty spot now where I could accept and go backwards. If you start as a base, what are you going to turn into? You're going to turn into an acid. Those are conjugate acid-base pairs, okay? Um, so, uh, so CH3, COOH, acetic acid, and acetate, they're conjugate acid-base pairs. One's an acid, one's a base. Water and hydronium, they're also conjugate acid-base pairs. One's an acid and one's a base. So in here, here's our conjugate pair. Was this at the bottom of your page the whole time? Oh, man. So you could have seen that a mile away. Okay, whatever. So that's a conjugate pair. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to identify the conjugate acid-base pairs that are in here. Okay? So in here, I'll, uh, let's just be really explicit. One pair here is CH3COOH slash CH3COO minus. That's a conjugate pair, right? This thing turns into that thing, and it's an acid-base pair. Another pair is H2O and H3O. That's an acid-base pair. So in the, in the next one, please, for you, know, you identify what the acid-base pair is in the next reaction at the bottom of the page. HCO3, is it acting as an acid or a base? base? It's acting as a base because it's giving away, sorry, it's, sorry, it's accepting a proton. Yeah, I'm, I always mix that up. So that's acting as a base. H2O is acting as an acid, so it's giving away. Now, if we were to go backwards, is H2CO3, when you go backwards, is it acting as an acid or a base? Acid. It's acting as an acid. It's giving away a proton. This is acting as a base. So our acid-base pairs here are uh, HCO3 and H2CO3 are an acid-base pair, and then the H2O and the OH are an acid-base pair, right? They're conjugate acid-base pairs. So that's one acid-base pair. That's their acid base pair in this reaction H2O and OH minus. Perfect. Hopefully it makes sense. It's, it's what you start with and what does it turn into, what you start with and what does it turn into. That's it. Right. Okay. I know that this has been a lot so far. I know that this has been a lot today. Um, just a little bit more. Let's try and do this together. Answer the following questions for the following reaction. What are the two acids in this reaction? What are the two bases? And what are the two conjugate acid base pairs in this reaction? Go ahead, try it out. I'll give you uh, about a minute to do this.
Would you agree that H3PO4 and NH4 plus are acting as the acids in this case? Or donate protons. The one and the four is one in the reverse direction. The bases, NH3 and H2PO4 minus are acting as their bases. And our two conjugate acid-base pairs are H3PO4 and H2PO4 minus, and then NH3 and NH4 plus. Good. So those are our two acid-base pairs. Um, so far, have we done anything like mind-blowing today? No, probably not. We've gone through a lot of definitions. We've gone through a lot of like just information. I've, I've tried to jam and cram as much kind of crap into your brains as I possibly can for today. Um, what I would like, I would like to just kind of, uh, there's a bunch of questions here, you, you textbook questions, but mostly I just want you to focus on some of these diploma questions. And then maybe we'll take five minutes to start talking about conjugates, or sorry, uh, the strengths of acids. Um, our goal, unfortunately, our goal is to try our very best to finish this entire booklet tomorrow. So um, I apologize, but just take, take five to ten minutes. And, and try and do these diploma questions, okay, try and do these textbook questions, and if, I, if people are getting restless, then we'll move on to strengths of acids. But I just don't know how much we're going to be able to get. Oh, yeah. That would be a great idea. Um, oh, it's over there. Um, if uh, you can listen to me, listen to me or not listen to me, it doesn't really matter. 
Uh, monoprotic means uh, an acid or a base that can either accept or donate, right? Depending on if it's an acid or a base. Just one proton. Just one proton. That's what monoprotic means. Okay. So again, you look at your you look at your um, your periodic table, your table of acids and bases. And uh, let's pick that one question that you're talking about. What is it? No. No. Yes. Okay. Ascorbic acid, which is H2C6H6O6, right? Ascorbic acid. Uh, is it monoprotic or is it polyprotic? So let's look for ascorbic acid in our thing. Ascorbic acid is right here. Now take this acid... And let's see, can it donate only one proton, or can it donate more than one proton? What do you think? You should have dealt with this at the chem 20 level. Monoprotic and polyprotic, those are chem 20 terms. H2C6H6O6, when it donates one proton, it turns into H1C6H6O6. Are, you, are we okay with that? Now, can this thing donate another proton? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? Because the H in the beginning. Because, but maybe the H in the beginning can't be donated. Well, we can check in there. Yeah, you can check. Find this as an acid. Find this thing as an acid. Do you see H1C6H6O6? Yes. yes. Yeah. I see H1... C6H6O6. So this thing can donate another proton, right? So when we go back to that original thing, was ascorbic acid monoprotic or polyprotic? Polyprotic. One reaction, then another reaction. I want to give you an example, okay? Let's look at NH4, ammonium, NH4 plus as an acid. It's right here. How many hydrogens does it have? It's got four. So is it monoprotic or polyprotic? What, is your, what does your gut tell you? Polyprotic, right? Well, let's double check. Let's just, let's just double check for, for the same. So can this thing donate one proton? Yes. Now find NH3 on the acid side. There is no NH3. You can't. So that means these hydrogens cannot be do donated, at least in an aqueous medium. So is NH4, is that monoprotic or polyprotic? Mono, because it can only donate one. You don't see NH3 as an acid. Does that make sense? But that's a Chem 20 thing. You should have gone over that in Chem 20.
seconds to just kind of finish up either those textbook questions or the diploma questions. And then we're gonna we're gonna define you know strengths of acids and then I'm gonna let you go because that's just that's a lot. Okay, I'm going to bring your attention back up to the front. Um, so I apologize if you're mid-video game right now. That's okay. Uh, it'll be all right. Uh, which of the following rows identifies the bronsted lowry bases in here? So all you have to do is go through, label acid base, acid base, whatever. So acid base, acid base. And so our two bases are water and nit nitrite, right? Not nitrate, nitrite. So water and nitrite, so I'm going to that. I will immediately cross out A and B. That's what I would do. Immediately, immediately, I would cross out A and B. And then it just says, what's one conjugate acid-base pair, right? HNO2, what does HNO2 turn into? No? HNO2. Yeah, sorry, that's okay. HNO2 turns into NO2 minus, right? So nitrous acid turns into nitrite. So nitrous acid does not turn into nitrite. You know what I mean? Water turns into hydronium. So that is a conjugate acid base pair. Does that thinking make sense to you? Does that kind of, yeah? All right, perfect. Ascorbic acid, we already did that, right? Uh, ascorbic acid is polyprotic and it can donate two protons if it wanted to. Okay, all right, sure. And the reaction represented by the equation above, the bronsted lowry base is, so this is acting as an acid and a base. So the base is fluoride. We'll get rid of those two. And its conjugate is HF. Perfect, no problem. Sky. 37 says ascorbic acid is classified as a polyprotic. And wouldn't its conjugate base be amphiprotic, not amphiprotic? Oh, man. Yeah, sorry. That's what happens when you go through questions too quickly. So that's, that's me not even reading the question, right? That's a silly mistake that you can't do, you can never do. So that's me being embarrassed or whatever. Ascorbic acid is polyprotic. Awesome. And it's conjugate base. So it's conjugate base. This thing, that thing cannot donate two protons, right? That thing is amphiprotic. Absolutely. So polyprotic and is amphiprotic. Thank you very much for stopping me and doing that. Okay, last form of question. Uh, I'll just label things as acids and bases because they want acids and bases. So acid, base, acid, base. So the Bronsted-Lowry bases are water and nitrite. So water and nitrite. 
I'll cross out the first two because they don't have water in the H, right? And then any conjugate acid-base pair in here, H2O and H3O, H2O and H3O. Yes. Is it the exact same question? Yeah. No way. That's how that shows you how well my brain's working at Wednesday morning. Okay, perfect. We got uh, two minutes just to define some things because I need these definitions to stick in your mind. It's been a long time since we talked about strong versus weak acids. Okay. So some acids will ionize completely in water while others only partially ionize. Strong acids ionize completely because water has a much stronger affinity for the proton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid looks like this. It's got a Cl and it's bonded to an H. Now this hydrochloric acid molecule it will, it's, it's, when you add it to water, it bumps off of a bunch of water molecules. What you have to remember is that um, the molecules and the particles in a solution, in a liquid, are so close together that this hydrochloric acid molecule, this hydrogen chloride particle, it's bumping off of things probably about a million times a second. It's just bumping into things so radically and so quickly and so fast that it's, it's, there's a million collisions of that one particle every second. So it's impossible for us to kind of visualize it. But this HCl, it's going to bump into water. And I'm going to show water as H2O. So what happens... When hydrogen chloride bumps into water, one of two things can happen. Either it can hold on to the, uh, the, the proton, or it can donate the proton to the water. Now, whoever has a higher affinity for the proton will keep it at the end. Does that make sense? This is like a tug of war between the chlorine and the oxygen. It's a tug of war. And whoever has a stronger attraction will win it. Chloride has a garbage attraction. It's weakly holding on to this proton. That's why we call it a strong acid. As soon as it bumps into something, it gets rid of it, right? Water has a pretty strong attraction to hydrogen, okay? So that's what I want you to think about going into more. It's just that this is just a tug of war for a proton, that's it. Thank you.